imposing GST on people who are not eligible to pay taxes. You're pushing people to the brink. Hello, welcome to Taylor's Take. I'm very honoured to have here with us YB Liu Chintong, the Deputy Minister for Investment, Trade and Industry. Thank you very much for inviting us to your very lovely office. Uh, this is your former office. <laughs> yes, uh, it looks a bit familiar. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for uh, you know letting us uh, ask you a few questions about the budget. So, initial impressions: uh, budget 2024, largest budget in history. Uh, what are some of the main takeaways that you think the man on the street should know about? First of all, I think this is a balancing act. It is a tough environment uh, during COVID. There were one MDB debt that we had to deal with. Uh, but at the same time, the Prime Minister has chosen a moderate path so that you don't, you, the budget doesn't go extreme. There were many people who proposed uh, uh, the reintroduction of GST, mm. which the Prime Minister did not adopt because uh, by not inflicting uh, GST on people who could not afford to pay tax, mm. uh, that sets a context for recovery, not just for the overall economy, but for every ordinary people. Okay, so let's uh, talk about this uh the SST, the sales and service tax, was increased from 6% to 8%. At the same time, uh, other targeted subsidies, including uh, the STR, the amount was increased from 8 billion to 10 billion. Uh, so, you know, what do you think about that move? It is a difficult choice. And when it comes to in increase of uh, SST from 6 to 8%, it has to be read in the context of not reintroducing GST. So, imposing GST on people who are not eligible to pay taxes, you're pushing people to the brink. And therefore, I think the Prime Minister has made the right choice. Service taxes are only involving people who are consuming uh, more expensive goods. You will have an impact on a, a smaller group of people. And I think this is a balancing act that uh, should be accepted. So let's pivot to Miti, uh, your, your ministry. So one of the things that was highlighted was a 200 million allocation for the new industrial master plan. So what should industry pay attention to with regards to some of these METI related uh, announcements? I think the, the main idea is outcome-based uh, incentive, reinvestment allowance. I, I think this is the way to go uh, so that we can encourage a lot more reinvestment into existing facilities as well as also uh, new facilities. So with, with uh, so, so many of these incentives being announced for both domestic and foreign uh, direct investment, uh, do you anticipate that this will lead to the creation of uh, better paying jobs, uh, especially for Malaysians and our graduates from our public as well as private university? So what we are hoping is that there will be a lot more investment into the economy and these investments are generated by number one, the shift away from China, the China plus one situation due to geopolitical uh, uh, shift. Secondly, by green transition with a lot more uh, companies, a lot more individuals investing into solar, investing into EV, uh, as well as uh, with tech up, as I say, uh, the more companies invest into automation, it will improve productivity as a whole. And you also help uh, to see a lot more investment and also see better jobs, better economic opportunities. And even in the service sector, uh, related to manufacturing, uh, manufacturing services, you'll be able to see a lot more innovation, a lot more systems integrators coming in on the RE side, on the automation side. And this will also hopefully uh, produce uh, good quality jobs for our graduates. So uh, with that, I'd like to say uh, thank you very much thank uh, you. Wabi Liu for your time. Thank and you uh, we look me. forward uh, to more interactions and also uh, to be able to invite you to visit uh, Taylor's University sure. Lakeside sure. Campus one of these days. Thank you. And uh, thank you for watching Taylor's Take.